Hey guys, it's Adam here, your Northern Tech, bringing you yet another review of a product for vaping. Oh yes. Today, we're going to review and build and test the Pico Squeeze. The Pico Squeeze, people. We just did the Drip Box 160. Now we're going to see what the Pico Squeeze can do. Sit back, relax, roll that intro, and let's get on with this. Alrighty, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at what is in the box, Pico Squeeze. We'll go ahead and open her up here. Right away inside the box, we see the device. Tiny little device, really nice. Your squawk bottle on the bottom there. Only button I see on it is right here. I'm not seeing any voltage or wattage control at all. So I believe this operates like a mech mod probably regulated to prevent uh, any short circuits or anything. I'll have to read the manual. Just got this in the mail today, not sure from who. So I figured, frig it, we'll do a blind review of the product and I'll give anybody a shout out because I don't know anybody who carries this mod. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it. Put that off to the side, we'll see what else we get in the backs. So under here we got a bag of cotton, good old Japanese cotton. That's what all the kids are using nowadays. And under here, we got some other goodies. We got an extra squonk bottle. That's right, the Pico Squeeze is a squonker, just like the, the uh, Drip 160. We have, oh, China's been including better screwdrivers. Look at them go. Decent. We have, um, looks like two pre-built pre Clapton coils. So that means no building coils this time. We can just pop these puppies in and hit it. And we have a USB cable for charging. Nice. And of course we have the E-Leaf Pico uh, manual, the operator's pamphlet. If you're not bad. So let me just go ahead and put what we don't need back in the box and we'll dive right into the device. So here it is. Like I said, it doesn't look like it really carries much for wattage control or anything of that fashion. It looks like it's just a straight up mechanical mod. So as the battery diminishes, so does your quality of vape, I'm assuming. And this here, they call it the E-Leaf Coral Dripper. And yes, people, you don't need to use a dripper with this. You could actually just put any device on the top there and use it. However, with these types of uh, RDAs, you want to use them with a drip. Because as you see in the bottom here, there is a hole right there in the drip in the base of the 510 pin, which is where your juice will get pushed up through, just like on the drip box RDA. And even on the base of this thing here, you can see that hole where the juice gets fed from. So that's how it works. No gaskets, no nothing, just straight up mesh together, forces the juice through and soaks the crap out of your coils. Lovely jubbly. Let's go ahead and screw that back on here. Pop the lid off the guy and that reveals the worst kind of RDA in the world, a two post single hole. I hate these, they're not my favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the screws here. But I know, I'm backed out as far as possible because I'm gonna build this in dual coil mode. Nice. Okay, so the coils we're gonna use today are these Clapton's that they supplied. Here are the Clapton coils, which are not going to gain focus, I bet. There we go. There are the Clapton coils they gave us. So we're gonna go ahead and jam them in. They're already pre-cut and pre-bent to fit. Slide right in, hopefully, just like a so. Then we'll do the same on the other side. Actually, what I wanna do is we got them in. So I'm gonna bend the legs out to make it for easy cutting. Decent. We'll grab the other coil here. I got a fully charged battery over there on my desk that I gotta bring over and toss into the device. Ooh, that's tight, eh? Ah, that's one problem with these uh, two post single hole setups is there's just not enough room for a decent sized dual coil build in them. Some of them, the holes are big enough where you can actually use twin 20, 22 gauge or 24 gauge, but then there's others where it's just a main major pain in the arse and you don't want to use too thick of a wire, but you really want to sub ohm. So you end up building like this single coiler and I'm almost tempted to set this up in the single coil mode because this dual coil setup is not taking and bend that leg out. And then we'll go ahead and do ourselves a solid and screw down the terminals. At least they gave us a decent screwdriver this time around. Well, you could probably wrap coils on a screwdriver like this. So these coils look to be about three millimeters in diameter. Not too bad, not too bad. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim them up. I got nothing on my desk over here to do that with. So I'll return and we'll trim up those leads. All right, well, I got the leads all trimmed up. I took the battery terminal off the top here. Now, if you notice in this battery terminal, there's a minus sign that there is the negative sign for the battery. So we got our EFES battery here. Plop that in, go ahead and put the lid onto it, and then screw it into place. And we have a light showing that we have power, so I should be able to pull the trigger, and we should get some glowing soon. 
Oh, that good old uneven glow, eh? Gotta love these pre-built coils. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool, and then we're gonna go ahead and wick it. Now, I might as well use the, the cotton they give you because, well, why not, right? I do have Japanese cotton here, but I figured frigate. We'll use the crud they give us, and that way there, we're using everything they gave us, and everything should be good. So I'm just gonna tear off a strip here, because I don't have any good scissors on me. We'll tear off a nice, nice generous amount here of cotton, and we're just gonna go ahead and work it into nice, a nice tube shape. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the cotton through the guy, and then pull it out the other end, like so. So it's loose in there, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one too. And there we go. The cotton is fed, now I just need to trim it, tuck it, juice it, hit it. Let's go ahead and get some scissors and trim those up. Smallest scissors I have, kinda of ridiculous, but whatever. Smallest scissors I have and probably the dullest. I'll trim some off the other side too because we really don't need that much cotton. Tuck her down there, leaving a little bit of air room underneath the coil so that air can get caught under there and cause some turbulence. I'm going to go ahead and pre-juice with some strawberry cheesecake, or strawberry cheese vape, whatever I decide to label this as. Even though you don't have to because you're going to squonk it, I always like to pre-juice. Now to get your tank out, it's just like on the drip box, you just take the bottom off and there be your tank there. And then you just work the tank until you get it to come out the bottom. And because this is brand new, <laughs> she's fighting with me. Okay, there we go. And that white thing comes out as well. Now, one of the questions that I know I'm gonna get is, is this tank compatible with the squonk box on the Kanger? Well, let's find out. Let me take the Kanger Squonk Box right off the device. We'll take the Pico. This is the one off the Kanger. We'll take the Pico, we'll put this here in. And the answer is no. The Kanger one hangs out the bottom too far and your base cap can't go back on. So these here are not universal squonk boxes. You gotta buy the one for your tank. You gotta buy the correct one. So we covered that bit. Now, can I just get you to release? Yeah, this one's gonna need a little bit of work. Let me go ahead and fill this bottle up. Looks to hold about five milliliters, I think. Probably five to six. Should be more than enough. And it does come with a spare tank, so if you do rupture one, at least you got a backup, right? And then basically you just take it, slide it back in, and you're done. Get the mag plate for this one, put it back on, and you are ready to squonk your face off. Nice. Just go ahead and rebuild the drip box here. So we are ready to vape. Now to squonk it, I'll show you here, even though the drop, top cap's not on, as you press it, you should see, oh, let me get focus on this. You should see juice coming up. Let me go ahead and put the top cap on here and then I can really hit it. Okay, well, you won't be able to see it, but uh, basically, well, you can see a little bit in the side ports. Anyway, let's go back up the toppy uppy view and we'll hit it and see, uh, see how she hits. Alrighty guys, let's see how it hits. We've already juiced it. It's good to go. So it's kind of weak right now. Hmm. I think this thing needs like variable wattage or something. The more you hit it, the better it gets. Let's just see if in the manual, if there's anything in there stating about a wattage, uh, a wattage increase. If there's a way to change the wattage on it because 
right now not very impressed with it there is nothing in here about changing the wattage this device is literally a mechanical mod so the wattage changes depending on the builds you put in there let's go ahead and try lowering the airflow I'll close it off um, I'll close it off almost completely So it sure as hell ain't no Kanger drip box, I can give you that much. But it does give you a decent little vape for a simple little squonk box. And it's a lot lighter than the Kanger too, which is nice because that means uh, easier in your pocket to carry it around. Now, I'm not impressed with the out of the box performance myself. I think it's kind of weak and should have some sort of a, a voltage control on it or a wattage control. That would be nice to have. But all in all, it's not a bad vape. And these things have an entry price point of anywhere from $30 to $50. This is exact kit. And it seems like the longer you hit it, the more those coils get worked up and start producing a better vape. And then when your juice, uh, your coil feels a little not saturated, you just squonker. Release. Brush the juice coils. And there you have it. The E-Leaf Squeeze, the Pico Squeeze by E-Leaf completes with the coral squonkable drip. Not a bad device, but I prefer the drip box over this. However, the entry point for the price of this here definitely decimates that of the Kanger drip box. As we said, drip box is anywhere from $70 to $100, and this bad boy here is anywhere from $30 to I've seen it as high as $50. Comparable in size, obviously, the drip box is a lot heavier, a lot meatier, and just a lot fatter. Uh, this thing here is about as thick as a Rulo. If you want to know the Rulo RX200, exact same body on it, uh, shape and everything. So there you go, guys. The Pico Squeeze. Hopefully you enjoyed that build, test, and review of it. It's not too bad once you break those coils in and you get them warmed up a bit. But right from the get-go from the cold, they don't really produce a good vapor. However, I might try different builds in there. Go single coil, see how that is. You never know. There anyway, people, that's my review on the Pico Coil uh, Pico. The E-Leaf Pico Squeeze. Ha, I'll get it right one of these days. Let me know what you think of this device. Let me know what you think of squonkers in general. Let me know if you have a squonker and if it's one that I haven't reviewed yet. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming out. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click that like button. And until next time, guys, peace the frig out.